guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be about American Horror Story episode 8, Sojourn? So Sojourn? Sojourn. This episode was a little lackluster for me. I guess it was more of a filler episode. There wasn't too much happening. First, we see that Michael has discovered that Ariel Baldwin and Mead, his beloved Mead, has been burnt at the stake. They're all dead and he's just like sobbing because he feels like he's alone and he doesn't have anybody and so he's just kind of like really really hurt. Our girl Cordelia shows up and Cordelia's like hey um yeah you alone you definitely are alone nobody's with you anymore that's what's up and um you feel alone and he's like yeah I feel alone but it's not gonna stop me I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get me you know you know I can resurrect the day and she was like okay I thought about that and uh, we actually hit her soul so you won't be able to find her and he's like got me she's like but i see good in you and i want you to be good and you know you, you can stop all this and we can work together and he's like nah i'm good i'm gonna kill everybody you love and he kind of just rolls off he roams around and he gets into this forest and he's just distraught because he don't have nobody and his homegirl meet is dead he she is just dead and she ain't coming back he's upset with his daddy because you know his daddy isn't there for him at the time when he needs them and he doesn't understand like how he's gonna be the antichrist if he don't know how to you know he don't have no no schedule no lesson plan no nothing he's having like these visions these illusions he's seeing children he sees this angel the angel's like look michael you good like you're a good person on the inside. God loves you. That vision goes away and all of a sudden he sees like a goat. And I guess he thinks it's his daddy. So he like kills the goat and whatnot. Yeah, that's pretty much all that happens in that, in that forest. He was, he was going crazy in that forest. And then he stumbles along, gets into the city, finds this like uh, Church of Satan congregation going on. We see, we have this woman named Hannah. Hannah is the leader of this congregation and she's upset with them because they're not doing the most they are just being all lackluster and like not evil enough she was saying how she robbed a nursing home and then gave the money to the nra and i was home and i was dead i was like this is y'all <laughs> and so all this is going on in the church michael sat in the back like observing it like these people nuts like i'm supposed to be their leader and they crazy like they we have no organization going on he meets this kind very kind woman named uh madeline she offers him to stay at her place and stuff and give him food and shelter and he's like you know i'm being very satan like and she was like we all have our faults they go back to madeline's place and madeline is explaining to him how she had sold her soul and um in exchange she got her a lazy boy she got her um, premium cable channels, like just basic stuff. And he's like, so this is all you got? Like little simple pleasures. And some about Ryan Reynolds, girl. They was they name dropped Ryan Reynolds a couple times in this episode. And I was like, okay. But after Madeline explains all that, Michael's like, I'm the Antichrist that y'all are looking for. And I'm not even Antichrist material. Like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, prove it. And he shows her little 666 on the back of her, on the back of his ear. And she's like, oh, the mark of the beast. Yeah, but I don't know what to do and, you know, all this other stuff. She's just, like, smitten with him because this is her, like, master son. The one they've been waiting for. So she brings him to the church. At the church, Hannah and them are about to sacrifice two, two good people. Just got them in their drawers and about to sacrifice them. So Madeline and Michael pop through and, my, and Madeline's like, look, this is who we've been waiting for. This is the Antichrist. And they're like, Hannah's like, okay, well, some proof, please. And he shows him the little 666 in the back of his ear. That's his, like, little calling card. Like, this is me, y'all. He reveals himself, and everybody's like, whoa, this is who we've been waiting for. Our master's son, Mark of the Beast, and all that. They're just having a good old time because they're realizing, you know, they're realizing the apocalypse is approaching because Antichrist brings the apocalypse. And so they're like, what can we do for you? Like, trying to give him love and attention. And he's like... I don't know what it is like. I just want a lesson plan. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell y'all. He's frustrated because he doesn't know what to do. And he doesn't have the confidence within himself to figure out what to do. And his daddy's not talking to him right now. They have having issues. And so it's hard for him. He's having a hard time. And he's talking to Madeline. And Madeline's like, 
what's wrong? And he's like, I don't know what to do, boo. Like, I don't know how to leave y'all. I just lost one of the people who believed in me the most. And I don't know where to go from here. And she's like, you lost somebody, you say? I can help you with that. Madeline and him are driving in the drop top of California they drive into Silicon Valley because that's where the collective is so the collective is they had mentioned in episode one I think episode two they were the ones who were responsible for that like underground bunker that they were in they're responsible for like they're the rich and the elite who sold their souls and um, they are like super ready for the apocalypse because they sold their souls so you know they know Madeline and Michael get there and um, Michael was kind of nervous. He's like, I don't know what to expect, but I'm going in there. And she's like, you know, do your best. Um, he's like, why are you being so nice to me? And Madeline's like, you know what? I'm just trying to get a good, I'm trying to get a good bed downstairs, if you know what I mean. Like, I want to be in, like, one of the lowest circles of hell. And he was like, okay, I'll put in a good word, boo. Like, I don't, okay, crazy. And then we see another Evan Peters character, Jeff. And we bring back Billy Eichner. Um, he is mutt. Jeff and Mutt are some little tech people and they have sold their soul and they make sex robots. And that's their thing. And they smoke cocaine all day. They never get high. Uh, they never OD. I mean, they get high. They never OD because they sold their souls and they can, you know, and they get to do what they want to do and have fun and live their life. And that's, you know, cute. And we see Evan Peters with this little bowl cut. And I was like, this, not, this is not the look right here, Evan, but... I'll follow along, but I don't like this bowl cut look. But, you know, we digress. And we also see Wilhelmina Venable. And Wilhelmina Venable is just reading this poor woman who came in, I guess her assistant. So Wilhelmina Venable just is just nasty with the tongue. Like, she is just, she's reckless. She's very reckless with the mouth. You know, it's just ridiculous. And she is just beautiful in this, like, purple outfit. Purple being what they wore at the outpost, like the elite people wore purple, so she has on her little purple Wilhelmina Venable can dress. And she works with Jeff and Mutt, like I guess, like a partner with them, something like that. So Michael finally gets upstairs, Jeff and Mutt don't tell Wilhelmina Venable that Michael is coming. And so I guess that's like setting up something for the next episode or later because Wilhelmina Venable I guess feels like slighted or something. So, I don't know. We'll see later how that plays out. But, so, Michael gets up there. Jeff and Mutt are there. And they're like, how do we know you're in Christ? And he shows um, the 666. And they have this random woman up there. And she's like, yeah, he is the Antichrist. I could feel the darkness off of him. And so, he's looking at her all crazy. And he's like, his eyes roll back to his head. She tries to run. He burns her like that. And then kind of shows his true face to Jeff and Mutt. And Jeff and Mutt, that's all they needed to see. Like, they didn't need to see all of that. They only need to see a piece of that. Like, they were really convinced. Like, Michael is doing the most in that scene, I guess. He's coming into himself more. And so Jeff and Mutt are convinced. And they're like, yes, praise you, praise you. And so they're like, what can we do for you? Like, what's, why'd you come up to, to see us like this? What, what, why'd you give us the honor? Like, what's going on? And Michael's like, I lost one of my... You know, the people that believe in me the most, me. Like, I want to bring her back as a, you know, I need her. And so they're like, say no more, fam, we got you. And make a robot out of mead. They make her, like, from what Michael, like, recounts of her. Like, tell, they were like, tell, tell us about her so we can, like, make her how you remember her. And so they make mead. Mutt tells him, like, don't, don't let her know that she's a robot because, like, she's going to go crazy. Like, she's going to have, like, an existential crisis. And it's going to be too much for her. They turn meat on and meat is like, Michael, I've missed you. Um, but yeah, like I said, it wasn't too much that happened in this episode. But um, enough. Like, we get to see. We got to see Michael. I missed Michael. Uh, we didn't see him last episode. And uh, we get to see him with a little cute self. So that was all, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought was memorable about this episode. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Bye.